What's up, y'all? My name is Josh. Today we're going to be interviewing Flying Fish. This is the first volume of Every Sound at Once. All the timestamps, all the links to her socials, and Flying Fish's new EP is going to be in the description. If you're interested in music interviews, this kind of thing, subscribe to my channel or follow my Instagram. But yeah, really excited to get into this. I think y'all are really going to enjoy this interview. Just a heads up though, this is an audio interview just to protect his identity, knowing that he's 15 and he just doesn't want his face going around the internet. But yeah, hope y'all enjoy. <laughs> Dude, I'll never get over that freaking... I love the, that. No, rec- that's just so fucking funny. Alright. That's awesome. Today, we got fucking Flying Fish. What's Good. up? Shout out, shout out the bro. Um... On the come up and rising through the fucking charts in the shoegaze, leading this new sound. Um, super excited to talk with you today. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. How about you? I'm doing great. Yeah, no. Um, I want to talk about just because you just released your new EP, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, just um, um, like a week ago. Yeah, no, I just wanted to start with that. Um, congrats on the new EP, obviously. It Thank starts you, off yeah. in, It starts off with an acoustic track called Wildflower. Will we see more of that sound? Or what made you want to start, that, start the EP with that track? I actually had a different track that was acoustic a while ago, kind of similar. That was just like one of the first like real full songs I'd recorded on like a live guitar. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't that good. It like... The, the microphone I have isn't that great, and it was just, like, a pretty corny chord progression. Yeah. But it, like, it, it was the uh, placeholder for a long while. And then when I was really putting the EP together to, like, finish it up, I had this chord progression. One day I woke up, like, on a Saturday or something, mm-hmm. and I was just p- fucking around on the guitar, and I had this audio recording of just one of the chord progressions I came up with, and I really liked it. So, honestly, I just brought that straight in FL Studio and added some mixing, fucked around with it, and I thought it would be just, like, a perfect little intro to sort of set the stage into this you know whole ep yeah no i really loved it um i'm like a big fan of like alex g and stuff like that and kind of reminded me of that Mm -hmm. um what would you say was like the larger theme or like the message that you wanted to communicate with this ep um the reason that i kept it as an ep as opposed to like making a full album is because i feel like there's just not enough concept or meaning behind it to really have like a whole release Mm -hmm. but for for the main like idea behind just the tracks and the theming of it it all just centers around like a very like the whole point is just to set out this landscape of music of just like this lush green almost like ethereal sound Mm. of just you know you just like being in the nature just like this expanse of just green grass yeah. The tall trees and the sky and just that's it you know just sort of giving that feeling with music dude no i totally got that from the from the ep you can't see right now but i'm like totally smiling i'm like you're extra dude you're describing exactly how i felt so i'm glad Thank that you. it like really translated um going off what you're saying about like ethereal i feel like blurry starts off with an ethereal dream pop feel which kicks into the wall sound we're all familiar with from shoegaze what does your creative process look like and what inspires moments like these? So for that song specifically, it definitely has more of a creative idea behind it than any other one. Because mm-hmm. I think I, I when I last checked, there was 38 total hours in that project file, like actually oh working God. on it. Something like that. Almost like wow. two days. So it's, 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 there's like a lot of, even though it doesn't sound that much different than the other stuff, if you really look into the little details, there's just so much more going on than any other song. But yeah, for the most yeah. part, I still, my guitar wasn't here yet. And I actually just returned the guitar because it was broken. But before it came <laughs> and I found out it was broken, it wasn't here yet, the, the yeah. electric. And I, so I was just messing around with like some synth like settings on the actual, on the sampler guitar I use. Cause like I'm, mm-hmm. I'm getting tired, you know, just doing the same fake sound so i was trying to mess around with it make it sound more like a synth and i had this like block out chord with like this arpeggiator that i put on it Mm -hmm. and it just had this really shimmery like sound and i thought it was just like it's it doesn't sound like anything a real guitar would make but that kind of works because it it still has that guitar tone to it and i thought it was just gorgeous so i added some reverb and chorus to it and just sort of put that as an intro to the song 
and then I built off those chords in the classic, like harder, grungier mm-hmm. guitar. Um, and it all just sort of came together because I have I there are a lot of inspirations I pick and pulled from for the song. Like some of the main guitar points, like was heavily inspired by Jam Remover's new album that just like came out today. Okay, the, weird, yeah. like some of the singles from it. Yeah, and you can kind of hear it, you know, just that very like um lo fi sort of almost like you can hear how the digicore and hyperpop yeah. production influenced her technique and how that kind of influenced mine mm-hmm. but along with like there's um this korean shoegaze artist that i really like called broken teeth dude and one of i his... love broken teeth dude, he's so good yeah. and one of my favorite songs of his is called paradox mm. and just i really like how in like um the the hook of the song it kind of has this very like syncopated drum rhythm it's like boom boom snare boom 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 snare yeah yeah, yeah. No, it, it has saying. like a very and then it like rushes back into the sound and so i kind of like played with that idea and did it in half time and then back into the real time during the actual drums where it would go like boom boom snare boom boom yeah. boom, boom snare boom 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 snare boom 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 snare and so i feel like those like just like transferring into that really just built out the framework. And then from then on, I kind of just blacked out and just kept adding like different things until it fit. Dude. Okay. First of all, whoa, like you're, you're only 15, right? Yeah, I am. I'm, Dude. I turned 15 like two days before I dropped. I wonder if you care. You just are like, I can just tell you're an expert on this. And you just speak with such passion and knowledge and just like excitement. Like, I'm so excited for you and your future. I really think you're gonna you're gonna go so. I mean, you're already like top of the top, but I mean, yeah. I think you're really gonna take this so far. Um, and the broken tea shout out. Oh my god, bro! No shout out. Um, Longinus Re- Records in Michigan, like all the paranormal and all of them. Mm-hmm. Um, Dude, I I swear, like the Kore- like the Korean shoegaze is so underrated, specifically bro. like. Dude, I know. Do you know um uh I think it's like WAPD or something, like W A P D D I. They're also friends with Broken Teeth and Paranol and all them. I might. It's like a it's like a Yeah, I know I know who you're something. talking about. Yeah, yeah I know. Man, they're about. so sick. No, so much cool music coming out of there. True. Um 900 no. percent agree. Okay, question going off of going off of uh what you just said, like how do you have like all this music knowledge and everything? I feel like when I was 15, dude, I didn't know anything. Like, how did you kind of, like, come about this? You know, where, like, your parents, like, really into music and that kind of just, like, built, like, your fascination with it? Or did you just, like, have a class or something at school? Or, like, what kind of led you to make music and be so, like, knowledgeable about it? I mean, I was brought up in a very, like, musical house in terms of there was always music playing, you know? Mm. Um, especially from my dad's side, if you go, if I like visit my dad's side of the family, there will, it, there will be music playing 24 seven, like just in the background at any sick. point, there's no, there's literally no point where it's not just playing on the speakers around the house. Like that's just how it is. there, And that definitely transferred from both my mom and my dad in my, uh, like where I grew up. Uh, there was always just music playing over the speakers off of like their giant CD collection back when CDs were still, you know, normal. Hey, and there's then, a resurgence right now. I don't know. Like, resurgence of everything. All like the, the physical media. I love physical media. Me too. This is unrelated, but I actually, I was just talking to Semi Collective Records about putting out CDs and then a vinyl release. You should so, totally do that. Yeah, that's going to happen. Well, we're doing it. I just got to send over the okay. file. Word, <laughs> word. Okay, something to be excited about for the Flying oh, Fish fans. Yeah. <laughs> I'm more, I think I'm more excited about it than any of my fans having like a real <laughs> physical copy of my music. Yeah, no, that's going to be sick. But um, back to like the, the actual question. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, my, my dad never like played that many instruments i'm like in the school band he played the trumpet and stuff but nothing you know like nothing more than the average person who just like picks up an instrument for like a year or two and my mom definitely more musically inclined in terms of she plays she actually like plays guitar and violin but both of them i mean they both specifically my dad like writes songs more he'll write lyrics and stuff he's just sings a lot and then my mom doesn't like write as much of her own stuff but still everybody like loves music in the family Mm -hmm. but nobody i feel like 
there was never ever any interest by anybody, never any insight to any, how any of this could have been made besides just past knowing how to play an instrument and recording that. Mm. And that always like that was always something that as a little kid you don't know like you don't have as much you know logical reasoning to just sort of figure like oh well i'm sure they just record all these things and like put it together and then alter it like i didn't understand the concept of recording something digitally past like a video you know because yeah 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 that still wasn't super commonplace to just have that on your laptop i was i mean i was born like late 2000s so obviously Mm -hmm. these things were not uncommon but it's not like at three years old i was just handed a laptop and shown what audacity <laughs> <Yeah>. was <laughs> so, started to a 360 deal. <laughs> 20, it's not like i had a phone a till, i mean the first iphone was like like first real iphone was barely even coming up as i was born so yeah no totally dude but like i, I was just super interested so in like sixth grade i think as the right before the pandemic happened i just Mm. looked up like how it worked and i was like i would just watch these youtube videos i wouldn't even do anything because i didn't have access to fl studio or anything but i would watch all these youtube videos on how this music was produced because that was also around the time i was really getting into hip-hop okay because nobody else in my family is anywhere near that type of stuff and that's sort of the time that i started branching off into my own music tastes and really understanding like okay, so this really is like this whole program and all these things. And just, mm-hmm. I, li- I learned FL Studio before even looking at an actual copy of it. Yeah. And so at that point, I was using like this online recording software called Soundtrap. Okay. And just I've sort of like trying of to, that. just trying to understand arranging loops and samples. It's dead now. Back in the day, it used to have like this thriving social media share function and all that. Mm-hmm. But uh, I was just like, I was super, I was getting into it. And like to sort of cut past, you know, a couple of years of just progression of just doing it and learning it recently, a lot more recently, I finally decided like to to put out the music on a regular basis because I had always wanted to share the music out like on YouTube or SoundCloud or anything. But at the at the end of 2022, at like end of December of 2022, I started consistently putting out like a song a week or like a song every two weeks on SoundCloud okay. and just like underground rap. It, it, it's basically like making fun of sigil core. Okay. <laughs> but um, I would like put it out and I enjoy doing it and it helped me find like actual communities of people who make music. Mm. And that really inspired me. I had gotten like to the point where I was also like decently focusing a little bit on plug and B because I'll always swap mm-hmm. between genres. And that was one that I was focusing on more at the time as well. Yeah, and it really gave me enough confidence to uh, finally try making rock again because that's like mm. stuff I grew up on, stuff that I really wanted yeah. to like just do. And I didn't have a guitar; I still don't have a guitar. Okay, <laughs> but I, I felt like I understood the music and mixing enough to make it realistic because I can play a little bit bit of piano now. I can play a decent bit of guitar, mm. and I understand enough about mixing that i think i can make it unique in a way that still sounds good and so i tried it and i posted it didn't expect it to do anything i'd been posting on tiktok for a little bit beforehand just making stupid videos to promote the music and stuff nothing ever really came up of it but um i posted it and overnight like the video got like 100 likes or whatever i'm like okay you know as expected it doesn't do much better than any of my other videos until i posted the slideshow right before I went into like PE, which is second period of my school. Yeah. And then four hours later, I finally checked my phone and it has like 20,000 likes. Yeah. And um, that's what really motivated me to like actually look into doing more than just an amateur attempt at this, like actually paying attention and studying guitar. So even if I don't have it, like to really understand what goes into playing it and try to translate that to my own music. And from there, I've just... I feel like not knowing how to play guitar at the start and not knowing just like actually chords and scales farther than like majors and minors and extensions really helped because it lets me add more of a unique idea to this. Even if it's not fully translated to my music, it lets me have another perspective, which I think is what connected with so many people, whether it, mm. whether whether you think and whether it truly is the most unique thing that can happen it definitely has that sound that not many other, you know, people had before very recently. Yeah, no, totally. 
no i definitely see like the unique sound that you're kind of coming with and it's like this revival of shoegaze but then also you can definitely see like the electronic kind of influence um from other genres it's a really dope and interesting sound um no that was like an awesome answer yeah it's been amazing to see your come up and just like how many people have really just like fallen in love with your music um yeah, thank you going back to the ep though uh with windowsill we get another track with vocals like um other tracks like other side of the ocean from your other previous releases and it sounds really great but you said before that you feel as though since you're only 15 you don't really have the experience to draw from or like the emotional maturity to write lyrics yet your music invokes like such like emotion creates an environment that you're talking about of like this lush forest that you're trying to communicate for this ep how do you view your relationship with writing and singing your own lyrics and how has your comfortability developed over time so at the start obviously i didn't sing in any of my songs and i still barely do it's i i haven't started singing more in my songs than i have mm. from the start like when I did change, I sung in it sporadically, did another instrumental, then sung in like other side of the ocean sporadically. I had whispers, but that's not there anymore. So, yeah. <laughs> and then like, um, it, it's like once every like three or four tracks, I'll have one that has vocals on it and it doesn't go throughout the whole song. It usually yeah. has like its own place, which I personally really like because I think, I don't think I know I'm obviously a much better musician than i am vocalist and i don't hide that and i think using vocals to complement the music as opposed to using it just as like another heading sort of takes away from the amount that i want to put into my instrumentals yeah. and so obviously i'm not like a with the amount of streams i have you would think i'm like a professional who's been doing this a while but you can listen to the music you can tell it's not like super developed it's still amateur mm. it's still getting into that sound so when i when i say these things this is uh, this is more of the road that i want to take it and the yeah. road that i'm progressing to as opposed to where it is at the moment but I, I want the instrumental to really speak for itself and then have the vocals just be there to complement it which is why i think almost every single song on that ep except for the very first song has vocals on it just only two of them have lyrics i mm. you can't really hear it but blurry and uh high school they have like me singing in it at used as like a pad in the background and used as like more yeah. of an instrument sound because i've never been shy of the idea of using vocals i just don't like the idea of singing lyrics to be a front piece which is mm. why i think it works so perfectly that it's like shoegaze music because that's a genre where vocals really do not have to sound anything like vocals for it to work totally totally and yeah, then no. when it just like comes to writing lyrics and stuff obviously i can i take a more poetic vague approach which i think works perfectly because i don't like to put too much effort into my music like you were saying i don't i, I don't feel like i have that not even emotional maturity but just the experience i mean i'm 15 Ooh. i'm a sophomore in high school i just got my first job a couple months ago and yeah. besides that the only other job that i've ever worked is this and i'm instantly already making more money than than the average person in america times like three so yeah. i don't feel like i have a good enough point of view to just express all of these things because these emotions that i'm feeling they're just average teen angst you know and mm. there's already millions and millions of other songs you can find if you just want to listen to teen angst it feels overdone cliche and just nothing special about it and i want my music to just really portray who i am as opposed yeah. to just the feelings that you might see me as mm. and Dude. yeah and like so when i'll write it i don't spend a lot of time and i think not spending a lot of time writing these lyrics really brings it to an advantage because it forces me to not just spend too much time trying to think over it and put all this amazing like ideas that i might have into it because at the end of the day i know that they're really not the greatest ideas and whether that's just imposter mm. syndrome or just like genuine knowing that it's not all the way there and just lack of confidence i think it it really at least helps in this release because it gives it that much more just visual and descriptive style that i wanted as opposed to really dialing in on the details because I'm a very detail-oriented person when it comes to writing things, 
I, like I, I've I've written poetry and short stories and stuff before, and I love writing them very visually. I love explaining all the senses and all the surroundings, but I don't like dialing in on every single you know piece that could be there because the whole point of writing and coming up with a setting and a story is to let the audience almost create like half of the story is created in the audience's mind. Yeah. And dude, yes, know, yes, yes, yes. I'm going, uh, it's basically I'm over analyzing lyrics that do not need to be over analyzed because when I was writing it, I really did just take 20 minutes to just think of what the song sounded like in mm. terms of visual and then just like write it out as what it would be in word form, what the song would just be in word form, which is why they're so poetic and abstract and why there's not like a, a huge amount of meaning behind it. But they're still vague enough that it allows the audience to connect with each line in their own way. Yeah. And there there is still a deeper meaning behind some of it that can give it, you know, a little bit of extra, you know, feeling it, it just it, it just helps complement the song basically long story short i write stuff to complement what the music sounds like in word yeah. form and it can just take on so many different meanings after the fact and that's sort of like the the approach that i'll take lyrically yeah no dude i feel like you need to give yourself some credit because like your understanding of how this all works is literally like perfect like it's like it's so important to not to be so explicit in your lyrics where you're like saying exactly everything and to be a little bit more vague so that like, you know, the, the listener can kind of insert themselves into it and not reveal the entire like story, but just trying to transcribe a feeling or what you're saying about how vocals can be also an instrument. Like, I think if you go back to the origins with like dream pop, uh, with Cocteau twins, like you see like, Mm -hmm. their transformation from their original work um and i think they're inspired by a band like happy birthday or, or something like yeah. that um towards like them just kind of delving into this way of using um vocals as an instrument rather than explicit lyrics and also it's just like a time crunch like they had to they had to release an album they're running out of time they only had the studio for one more week they just you know they had mm -hmm. to they had to come up with something um so yeah. i totally like it's just amazing to see your perspective on this and how much of a deep understanding you have of music and it's really also like insane how much perspective you have as a 15 year old of like i totally agree with you there's i feel like there's so many people right now that are trying to do shoegaze that it's not like super authentic or mm -hmm. they're like trying to create a story or invoke emotion that's like authentic to them but more so trying to capture this new wave and trying to attain fame and i think your approach of really being authentic towards the music and i just i can tell from your energy how much you really care about this and how it's really authentic to you and you want to do it in the perfect way and understanding that this is a journey and not something that you just have to capitalize on right now and try to make the most money but you're really concerned about the mm -hmm. art dude music's in good hands man music's in good <laughs> hands holy shit yeah and man. i have like i have no issue with people who just write lyrics to write lyrics and to fit the vibe and yeah. i've done that plenty of times myself but when it comes to me as an artist and making genuine art as opposed to just music because Music and art go hand in hand, but there is mm. very much a difference between a song and a piece of art. And mm. art doesn't have to be perfect by any means, True. but it has to be what you want it to be. And to be my art, I can't just go out there and spend hours trying to write something to perfectly fit what I think the audience wants to hear and what I think exactly. is the most relatable. When at the end of the day this whole thing is really just a test of my growth. Like the whole reason I made this EP was just to show my growth from this yeah. like TikTok style synthetic yeah. shoegaze into like a bit more really fleshed out stuff that I've spent a couple months just really researching mm -hmm. and taking away from every other aspect of my life to put into this. It just would be wrong, not, not to my fans even, but to myself to mm. just... To, to not take this in a direction that I would feel comfortable doing it in. And while yeah. it's not maybe the most fulfilling lyrically to write, it is a lot more personal 
and a lot more real to myself than if I literally did just write a song detailing every thought and feeling that I had. Because for some reason, the personality doesn't come from writing about who you are. It's about writing what you are, you know? Mm, Yeah, no, totally. Being authentic to yourself is so important. Um, Going off of that, like, I feel like uh, with this kind of music we hear on this album, there's like acoustic sounds like Alex G or faster tempos and rocky elements like Julie or mellow riffs you might hear from were and then also a sound a voice that sounds like it could be the leader of a revival of authentic emo with bands like J June in the 90s. Um, is a flying fish band on the way or do you want to stay solo in the near future? I would have absolutely no issue with being in bands. I've tried to be in bands many times but i think the first issue is i don't have much to bring to the table besides just being a producer and engineer and stuff for an actual band which is why most of the time if i ever did projects with somebody else it's less of a band and just us going back and forth with ideas to build the song upon because if it were a real authentic band playing gigs and stuff which i would have no issue with having a band to help me play gigs and stuff yeah. But Flying Fish started as a solo project. This started as, you know, who I just am musically. And I feel like I have, I would love to be in bands and I'd love to have tons of side projects and do so many great musical things. But in terms yeah. of Flying Fish as its own, this isn't necessarily like this wouldn't have room to bring other people in outside of just, you know, studio session, like helping and stuff because. Mm-hmm. Really, this is th- this is a musical reflection of me and my growth as a musician, and changing that in any way just feels like it's no longer the idea that I I had when I made Flying Fish, you know. And it's it's corny to say, but like this, it has a meaning, and especially coming up out of nothing to actually being able to be a true musician and make this my career and have my art be shown to the world at 15 years old it would just be wrong i guess to pervert you know the idea of just the 15 year old kid making music putting it out on flying fish and just growing as a musician which is why in my discography i dislike pretty much every song i've ever made pre-ep but but they all have an artistic reason and they all show my growth and they all detail my growth and i'm happy that my mediocre work is out there Because in a couple years, when I'm out of high school, and I actually have a grasp on what makes music good music, Mm -hmm. and I make something that really is meaningful and impactful in a way that actually transcends just being this TikTok artist, you can look back on my old music and look at, you know, the journey as it goes. And then along the side, I can have tons of side projects and bands as I get better at, you know, playing guitar and getting better at singing and just bouncing ideas off of people. But it just feels like it would take away from the initial music that I have. Mm. No, dude, you have so many profound takes. Like, I just, wow, I don't know. A lot of, a lot of wisdom from someone who's just 15 years old. Um, Thank you. Going off of that, how has your recent su- success made you mature? Has it... Um, push this kind of process a lot faster or how has it affected your ability to enjoy your childhood i mean wait could you repeat the question really quickly yeah yeah yeah, of course um so acknowledging like all this success and stuff and music have you feel like how do you feel like that's made you mature much faster or forced you to mature much faster or how do you still enjoy your childhood slash like how has it affected your childhood um and you growing up okay yeah no thank you (laughs) um i mean i'm obviously very very happy that all this happened Mm -hmm. you know it's literally every musician's dream whether they're still a kid like i am or they're literally 50 years old and have been making music for Mm -hmm. you know over four decades it's everybody's dream to have that big break and to actually be able to make your music into a career. Yeah, totally. And and seeing that happen live before my eyes so quickly, so young, 
is it's still every day when I wake up and I check my phone and I see that there are, you know, 700, 800 people listening to my music just in in that one moment, it doesn't yeah. feel real. It feels like I'm just going to wake up after this it's whole insane. six months long dream. Yeah. But I mean, I, I wouldn't say it's all great. I mean, having this many eyes on me instantly, especially as a kid with who lacks impulse control and is still very much growing and developing as a person. I mean, I still have, I still have another six months to go before I'm even allowed to drive on my own in a car, let yeah, alone no. two and a half years till I can vote, let alone like six years till I can drink. And then five years after that, when my brain is actually finished developing. So yeah, it's not like it, it's, it's weird having all these people constantly seeing me and looking up to me when I really am just like, I have no idea what the hell I'm doing. And yeah. it's kind of scary in that aspect. But in terms of like affecting my childhood and maturity, I wouldn't say that it like affected my, you know, actual, actually like who I am as a person. Mm. I think it helped me be able to portray like what I really want to do as opposed to just lying to myself about this style that I want to be and what I want to do. And, you know, there a lot of like personal things that aren't necessarily relevant, mm. but, um, beside before this, I was just coming home from school, making music every day to share with absolutely nobody. And, <laughs> yeah, you know, not having like the greatest life. And now I get to come home from school and make music the entire time afterwards to share it with millions of people, mm. you know, school sucks, but school sucks no matter what you're doing after it. Mm. And every kid my age is stressed. Every kid my age has anxiety and is, you know, not doing the greatest mental yeah. health wise. That's what comes with being a teenager and being in public school, you know? Yeah. And I think having music finally be able to be heard by everybody is a blessing and a curse for sure because it gives me so much more like reason to actually put effort and focus on deadlines and take away time from school and ruin relationships but it's definitely much more of a blessing just being able to do what i do every single day and actually have it mean something yeah no it's totally... but also it like fuels me to want to make the music i really want to make as opposed to just doing mediocre attempts because that's just what i do to make up the time when I'm bored, you know, this really lets me just dial in on like, not just what would my fans appreciate, but what would push me to make the best art I can, because that's what I would feel okay with putting out to 900,000 monthly listeners. Yeah, you know, it, it lets me take a step back and actually look at what I'm doing as more than just a little pastime. Totally. No, it's, it's insane. Like, I remember when I found you back in May, and you only had like, a thousand followers on instagram or something like that and now what you have like 20 20 something thousand or something crazy like that um it's been insane uh how do you feel like what do your friends think like um has that changed anything or are they just really excited for you what has that been like the the friends the people that i were friends with as i was coming up like as the actual stuff blew up I don't talk to that much anymore. And when you first hear that, you'll think like, oh, either he got an ego or he had a falling out. It's a lot simpler than that. My schedule just changed. And now I have a lunch period with zero of my friends in it. Oh, damn. But um, during the time and still afterwards, when we like text and stuff, they're very supportive. They're very proud of me. And I'm very happy to have them as friends because a lot of them knew that I made music beforehand. I would yeah. share my music with them just as like, little jokes and like just showing them what I'm doing because we all talk to each other about our hobbies. That's what friends do. Yeah. And they supported me way before then. So the fact that now I've blown up and they're actually seeing me be this like, you know, musician is yeah. really cool. And I don't tell very many friends. I, I ask most of my friends that already knew to not really tell very many other people that like, Hey, the kid that goes to our school, that guy, yeah, he's also the person that you listen to when you get home and you want to cry in the shower. <laughs> but yeah. uh, but I, I've told like friends and I don't necessarily try to hide it, mm. but I won't, I, I don't tell anybody anymore specifically. And I don't like it when people tell other people 
whether it's friends or family, like my mom posting about it on Facebook saying she's proud of me because I really appreciate that. I do. And I love that they're so proud of me to be able to talk to other people about it. But one of the main reasons I stay faceless at the moment, like I don't consider myself a faceless artist. I think I've said this in the past at some point, but like the reason I don't show my face is because I don't want this to interfere with my personal life and specifically my school life. Yeah. Because while tech, if if everybody at the school knows that I make music and that I'm super popular, it's it might not be that bad. But there's no good that's ever going to come of that, you know. Mm. I spend most of my time alone at school, and that's not like oh he's a loner or he doesn't have any friends, but just yeah. you know, school is school. You don't go yeah. there and instantly like be the most social version of yourself even though that's what everybody likes to believe mm. and it, it it wouldn't really help to just have thousands of people from my school flooding my comment sections trying to dox exactly where i live yeah no that too dude no that's like especially this internet age like mm-hmm. i don't know if you followed um what happened like haunted mound and all that kind of stuff that yeah was one guy that was just like Dude, yeah, no, that's like really important for your safety. Like, you're still a kid. Like, yeah, like, no. Um, like I, I'm 21, so I have more perspective on this. But like, dude, you have so much more to like grow and learn. And like, mm-hmm. no, I'm really excited for you. Um, and that's super big that you have like your day ones. Like, especially like when you get older, you're gonna come to really appreciate those people. Um, for like, sure, for yeah. Me, like. One of, the, one of the dudes that, like, I'm managing and working with has been my best friend since seventh grade. And, like, we just have this such this, like, strong trust with each other that, like, we can feel like we can conquer the world. Um, so having those That's people awesome. around you is just so important. So I'm glad that you, that you have that, that you have people that you can trust and feel comfortable around. Um, that's really big. Uh, but transitioning into more just, like, personal aspects about you away from like the EP and stuff like that. Um, I know that you're a big fan of jazz. What got you into jazz? Sure. And what advice would you give people hesitant to check it out? Or those kinds of people that are like, uh, you know, it's just not my thing, but they've only listened to like one or two songs or something like that. I love this. I just want to say really quickly, I love this question. Nobody's ever asked me that before. And I've been waiting for the day for somebody to ask me this. <laughs> Because I uh-huh. fucking love jazz. I guess the first time I would say I was ever really exposed to jazz, whether it like I, it didn't necessarily like immediately make me go like, oh shit, I want to listen to more of this. But uh, like I said, there was constantly music playing at, on my dad's side of the family when we go visit that because his father, mm. he has like his old laptop or like old computer just with mm. Pandora on it, hooked up to the speakers 24 seven. It only ever turns off when it's time to go to sleep. Yeah. And ninety percent of the time, it's playing some sort of jazz or something that is very, very heavily linked to Same. jazz. So yeah. Like tons of like, they're they're all into like classic rock and like Pink Floyd and stuff like that. Mm, okay, and okay. the Beatles. It's the one that he plays is called the Beatles Radio, but it's specifically mm. curated to everything he listens to, mm. which is there's tons of jazz and like Kenny G and just stuff okay. that you would you know just listen to on a summer day. Yeah. And then there's also a lot of like. A bit funkier inspired stuff like Steely Dan, very okay. jazzy. Yeah, you know, yeah, if you yeah. To Earth, Wind, and Fire, or any like yep. more of the disco bands from then, super funk and jazz inspired. So yeah. there's a whole ton of just jazz influence that I didn't even notice when I was super young. And then, shoot, I think the main way that it really started to creep in is when I started to get into hip hop more mm. because. I've always been very much more towards like abstract and lyrical hip hop. Mm -hmm. And a ton of that comes in boom bap. Yeah. And like, honestly, if I had to pick one that really inspired it more, it would be like MF doom and specifically Mad Lib for like just the sampling aspect of it. And because I was a producer at the same time, I would constantly be sample searching. I have a whole playlist Mm. of hundreds of samples that I started getting in 2021 all the way to now that I still update when I just sample search on YouTube and do all that and just find these jazz songs to sample. And that really invoked my feeling of like, I originally thought, oh, wow, this is a great sample until I realized it's no longer like me just loving it because it would be a good sample. I just genuinely enjoy the song so much. It just brings out such a feeling 
that you can't describe. It is art, and that's what I try to emulate in my music, even if it's not the same style. Mm-hmm. And so, as I further got into it, I discovered what I think would re- what I think really, really kicked off specifically the delve into what I listen to mostly now would be a name that probably everybody knows now, Piero Piccioni. Super Ooh. popular back in like the 60s, 70s, 80s when he was consistently composing soundtracks for, you know, Italian films. Yeah. And then recently, like a, a year or two ago, I think a little bit after I found him, he had two songs do insanely well on TikTok. And now he's getting yeah. streamed hundreds of times more than what it's he was getting crazy. beforehand. It's crazy. It's crazy. Not to say he was this- like... Not to say he was unknown beforehand, because he still had, like, oh, his most yeah. played song still had, like, two million plays or something. But now the fact that he has, like, literally hundreds of millions of plays and millions of monthly listeners is so cool to see how, even after their death and after they've stopped making music, it goes on. But yeah. I found his album, a full album on YouTube called Il Dio Sotto La Pe, or La Pelle. Mm. I don't know how to pronounce it. It's okay. Italian, so I would assume La Pe. Maybe I, I'm really not sure. I'm not, I'm not sure. <laughs> it's one of his lesser known ones, but at the moment, the the lead single from that one was his most popular song with a little over a million streams on Spotify. Mm-hmm. Now it's like barely even in his top ten. Yeah. But um, that song specifically is the one that stuck out to me. But the whole album was just so like it, it was so movie music, but so jazzy mm. at the same time, mm. and it just it felt so, it was like psychedelic jazz mm, and my love okay. for pink floyd since forever i think oh, is what okay, really yeah. got that to stuck with me and so i just fell into the rabbit hole of specifically italian jazz composers for film music and mm. as i started searching further i still sample searched i still found tons of it until it dove me into you know like japanese fusion jazz fusion funk type stuff like that yeah mafia and then C. And then I recently what? Uh, what's his name? Like Masayoshi Tanaka or Masayoshi Takanaka? Takanaka, yeah. Yes, yes. Like them, State Leather Jones, Report, yeah. Cassiopeia, like so good. And, and like, um, I think like obviously I I'm not explaining the whole thing, mm-hmm. but it just really, really every side of jazz just like hit a point for me that I loved mm. so much, like ambient jazz, psychedelic jazz, smooth mm. jazz. I started finally going back and listening to the classics again. Like, I love to me Chet some Baker ambient. And, you know, um, fucking, what's his name? Brian Eno. That's like, mm. not really jazz, but then that, the ambient influence that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, really great, like synthetic, specifically like synth, synthesized ambient jazz. Totally. Um, like that one album that was like music for plants. That one's great. I love um, Clouds by Graham DeWild. Super good. There's like just, I just really like now I can just name albums and artists off the top of my head to just know. But um, yeah, no. that really dropped me into trying to find all these like really underground, unknown jazz artists. And then a couple months ago, last year, and like also in like December ish. I bought a record player that has an MP3 converter so I could just find random, you know, records and sample it. And that opened a whole new door when I started just like going to Goodwill and just grabbing like the j- everything from the jazz record section for like 15 bucks and just bringing it home and listening yeah. to it and then opening up a whole new window. And I, now I just listen to so much more than I could even name off. Mm-hmm. I have like a record collection of like 50 records that I probably got for a total of under two hundred dollars that's awesome no i think like a lot of jazz like you were mentioning like spotify streams and stuff like that but i think a lot of jazz just exists within physical media and there's just like Mm -hmm. a different way of engaging with it and so much oh for sure for sure yeah unless you know the names you're never gonna find it um so i think like trying to make that more accessible is like such a big issue that you know Mm -hmm. we have to solve in jazz but um i'm glad that you're engaging with it and you know learning so much about it and you know that's what you got to do you got to just pick a couple random records you know and just listen to it um yeah no someone that i've been really liking lately west montgomery um if you want to get more into like Mm -hmm. like guitar like jazz guitar kind of stuff i think you would really like him 
Um, and I hope someday you can, um, you know, go visit Japan or something like that. Because I, uh, I was over there for a little bit. And um, the jazz community over there is insane. Uh, there's this one Kisaten that you have to go to. Kisatens are like cafes, but there's like a lot of jazz Kisatens where it's like all about jazz. And it's, it's like oh, wow. quiet and you can't speak. Um, most people oh, I totally have to go there. Yeah. So there's this one place called Eagle and Yotsuya. Dude, they had one of the best sound systems in the world. Um, it's so insane. You just okay. you have I, to I go have there to, eventually. Have to, yeah. Um, but no, dude. Yeah, no. You just have such a wide grasp of music at just fifteen. I was, I was, <laughs> I was just listening to freaking like the radio and stuff. Like, <laughs> I don't know if anyone is from Massachusetts, but if anyone knows Kiss One Hundred Eight, you know, I was just listen to regular mainstream pop so it's so interesting to see this new generation that's just so involved in music in wide swaths of different genres it's just so cool um and it's so amazing to see the passion that you really have for this uh awesome yeah no um and then some more some more deep diving questions. I gotta know what's the lore behind the profile picture? You know, why is this this you know this Elmo kind of thing? What what's the lore behind it? Um so for that, I mean uh, I gotta like I think shit. I don't know. I think I've explained this a couple times, so I'm trying to remember like exactly what happened Mm. but um like it was okay so i'm i don't think i've ever shared this part of the story specifically but i'm sure there are people that know because i don't hide this i'm Mm -hmm. jewish and i've had a bar mitzvah Mm -hmm. and it was during covid so Mm -hmm. i didn't have the actual like party until a year after so okay, okay. this basically it, it involves that because the day after you usually everybody will go out to brunch mm. and there's this i wouldn't say jewish specifically but new york deli that offers tons of kosher food and like matzo ball soup and stuff like that near me mm. and so we went there we rented out like their big place for brunch tons of people go there after their bar mitzvahs and bat mitzvahs What's good, y'all? Um, we just ran some technical difficulties, but we're gonna dive right back into the questions. So check it out. Yeah. But um, what's it called? Uh, okay. So last time we were talking, I think we were talking about like the the lore behind the profile picture, and then you were bringing up like um, it was like your bar mitzvah or something. Yeah. And then, um... Yeah. The brunch after the party for my uh, bar mitzvah. Okay. So wh- how is this all going down? Like, what's this place? Like, what's all this, you know? It's just saying? this, like, deli. Uh, specifically, it has, like, a lo- lots of, like, Jewish people will go there because they also have, like, matzo ball soup and just bagels and, like, you know, mm-hmm. deli deli shit. Like, New it's a New York deli, so it's very from common. New York, or? My, my fa- a lot of my family is from New York, and I used to live right. there for a little oh, bit, right. so. Fine. But like, um, I mean, New York delis, Jewish delis go hand in hand. So like, it's mm. it's a it's an obvious choice to just go after a bar mitzvah. Yeah. And they have this pastry section that has these like cupcakes. There's these Cookie Monster cupcakes and Elmo cupcakes. And I've always wanted <laughs> one since I was a little kid. Oh, My parents never got me one, so I was like, "You gotta get me one now! Like, come <laughs> on, dude!" So they got me one, and I just thought it was like the funniest looking thing ever. So I took a photo of it, mm-hmm. and I started using it as like my profile picture for everything. I mean, like Whoa. it was. Anytime I made a new account, anytime I posted something, which this was way before I even posted music, mm-hmm. I just had it as like my profile for shit, you know. Actually, I think this was right around the time I started posting music, so it was perfect timing. I was just like, eh, I use it for everything else. Might as well use it on this. It's fucking, it's funny, it's silly. I'm making like funny music. I'm not making this like super seriously, so I'll just put it up, you know. And it just like, it was, it was funny. I added it on everything. I used it for everything. It was just kind of like a, a signature at that point in just the sense that I had it on everything. You know, it's just, it mm. became part of like how most people use like the same profile picture for everything. Like that's just kind of what it was. And then when I blew up like overnight and I was like, well, I want to put something on Spotify now. What do I possibly make the image? I'm just like, fuck it. I'll <laughs> stick with this. You know yeah. I mean? It's working. 
and it became like such a like people i see people using it as their profile pictures now and like genuinely seeing it and going like yeah i recognize that because it's so recognizable you know yeah no because elmo is already recognizable and now you see like there's this cupcake version of it like you see it and you're like oh fuck yeah that's flying fish Mm. is wild to me and it's just it's still so funny the fact that i'll look on spotify and it's like the only account with like 900,000 monthly listeners that just has this silly ass like cupcake staring at you you know that <laughs> it's it's so funny to me that's so funny. i didn't even realize it was like a cupcake like i couldn't even really a lot tell. of people like can't tell there, some people think it's a cake some uh hello no <laughs> not the it's cutting in and out. Oh, man. We got to get you better Wi Fi, bro. <laughs> All right, all right. Yeah. Okay. Should where? Be good. Yeah, it always See, takes. Yeah, like, what's up with your Wi-Fi? <laughs> I this month it's just been going like crazy. Like mm. every every like thirty minutes to an hour, it'll just like go out for two full minutes, and I'll just like have to wait, and there's just nothing I can do but wait. Damn. Does that like sometimes mess up when you're like making music and stuff? Like you will like it'll like crash it or something or no? It'll it'll happen a lot when I'm like just you know doing something with friends. Like if I'm in a mm. call doing it, but. Luckily, FL Studio doesn't need to be online, so it's right. like covered there for the most part. Luckily, okay, good, good, good. But yeah, it's still annoying. Anyways, um, shit, I was saying like, what was I saying? Oh yeah, yeah. Most people, people think, don't realize it's a yeah, yeah, it's it's um, it's in like one of those just like small clear to go containers, you know, mm. that you'll just like pop on, like pop the cupcake in. Yeah. But some people think it's like a cup or like this is like some sort of like ball in water and like a cup of water or something. I and a lot of people just don't even know what it is. Yeah, no. But it's, I mean, it's, if you, it's just because it's small, you know, if like when it's big on Spotify, if you go and look at it on Spotify, mm. um, you can see like the sprinkles and it makes a bit more sense. <laughs> Like, you can't really tell well on Discord because it just, like, or on TikTok because uh, yeah, it's so yeah, small, yeah. it just blends it together. But if you just, like, look at a zoomed-in version, you can see the sprinkles, and now it's, like, just frosting for the face. And it makes a bit more sense. Mm. Actually, I think, I don't think a single person besides me has ever seen the full photo. <laughs> okay, where? Nothing, nothing special about it. It just, Rare um, photo. it's just, like, it's a full, I don't know, wait, let me find the original. Oh well, shoot! If you really Wait. look close, it looks like there's like a there's like a paper under it with like breakfast. There is, yeah. Stuff. That's a menu. That's that's their breakfast yeah. menu. It, it says I I have it cropped perfectly, so you can't read anything it says, and it cro- and it like crops out the logo because it's there's only like three of them in the entire world, and they're all in my state, like right around where I live. Oh, uh, word. But like it has the logo at the top, and then it's I took it vertically, so you can see like some food and like a knife around it. And then my my converse like right below the table like barely snuck in the bottom of the photo, mm. so it's like it literally is just like at a breakfast place, just like a little cupcake. Fire. But um yeah, and then I guess like looking towards the future, um, is there anyone you want to work with or like anything that you want to do like maybe like sort of outside of music that could be like anything from like maybe like a certain music video that you want to do or maybe like you want to do something related to clothes or something like that but i guess like one like 
anyone you want to work with, and then two, yeah, like outside creative pursuits. Oh, for sure, yeah. I mean, like working with pretty much, I, I'm I'm willing to work with anybody who like matches my artistic visions. You know, or who do you want to work with? I mean, specifically. Besides, like, I have a ton of friends and, like, people that I actually know and I'm connected with now that I just mm. haven't had the chance to, like, sit down and work with yet. Mm. That would be super cool. Like, um, I'm talking to, like, Wisp, another, okay. some, one of the other, yeah. like, She's shoe gaze artists book, right around then, uh, thinking about doing something soon. I mean, obviously, like, the people who got it at the same time as me, you know, like, mm. Quantic or something like that, who I've also Quantic talked to before. Quantic would be so sick. I don't, yeah. I don't know if that's ever possible. You know, you have to ask to, um, them. Talk to Dead Air, the the record. Um, actually, uh, their record label. I th- I'm pretty sure Dead Air just manages them and like yeah helps distribute a lot of it. But another like record label they're signed to. Listen to the oh, kids. Oh, one okay, of the A and Rs who who like is one of his main guys. I'm actually talking to and I'm friends with and is trying to sign me. So very possible. Mm. And I've talked to Quantic before. Like we're friends on Discord and stuff. Yeah. But, I mean. They're also obviously any of my idols you know half of them are dead but <laughs> just yeah. like any of the bands that i ever grew up listening to or just any of the classic like rock bands ever give me super, some bands give me some bands for the fuck people, i mean for like the people for the, with the with the people that i grew up on like green day offspring weezer yeah. you know blink 182 they're like, all like alive the very, popular they're alive but like if you look more into um you know like nirvana Okay, yeah. Linkin Park. Okay, like, there yeah. are a lot of <laughs> dead members just floating yeah, around. And, and then if you look even farther and farther, like, a ton of people that I'd love to work with who don't even make rock, like, 90% of all the, like, jazz composers that I mm. listen to are, like, you know, so it's, it's, but, like, I mean... Dude, Blink-182 could happen. They love doing collabs with, like... Blink-182 could totally happen. That would be artists. still... My mom's... That's one of my mom's favorite bands, so I think she'd, Dude, like, pass Dude, one of out. my favorite bands, too, like... Oh my god! Yeah, I grew up on that shit. Um, they, well, they just did um, or I mean, not they did a song, but I'm guessing they had to sign off on it. Did you see mm-hmm. um, Corbin and Lil Tracy and Black Curry basically did like not a cover, but it's like um, like it's like the same like kind of beat as uh, Blink One Eighty Two did for um, oh, I forget which song it was, but anyways, they like kind of did their own little like verse on it, which was kind of cool. yeah. No, I mean, now could, I mean, the fact that I actually have the reach to like talk to some of my favorite, yeah, like, artists and and then obviously like any of the shoegaze bands that I love and listen to, or like any of the metal totally. bands and stuff, like Sky's literally limit, any band dude. that's in my, you know, playlist, like the artist curated playlist that I have on Spotify. Literally any one of those bands hits me up, says we should do something. I would like cry, bro. Mm. Yeah, no, you definitely like don't underestimate the reach that you have at your size. Now you can, you can pretty much get in contact with anyone. I feel like a lot of people underestimate how much, like, artists are like constantly like looking at other people's music and stuff like that. I feel like artists are some of the people that are like the most tapped in, or like can find like the craziest artists that like have like the smallest of followings, like even like. I don't know, a thousand monthly listeners. Um, like sometimes like you don't know who that like one listener is. Uh, so totally, I don't know. Very excited for you. Um, and then I know you're super young, so I guess looking towards the future as well, do you want to stay independent? Do you want to get signed? You were mentioning something about talking to an a r What's kind of, yeah. how do you want to take this? I've been talking to tons and tons of label people, obviously. I mean, I would love to sign. I mean, signing, especially since I don't have, like, a super secure fan base. I mean, there are definitely diehard fans and people that I know, like, even if my listen, like my listeners completely fall off, I'll still be above 99% of all other artists out there, which is mm. so incredible, you know? Yeah. But, um... Obviously, it's not going to last forever, and mm. if unless I can continue to keep this going really well, it probably won't flesh out to be a super independent career without like merch and tours and stuff, which as, as somebody who's still in school and under 18 would be a lot harder to just figure out. 
So definitely signing to a label, especially because I want to eventually just make this my career and have an impact in the music world. Signing to a label would easily be the best bet. But I, I've just had this idea in my mind for a while, which hopefully it should be coming up soon. I don't want to sign or even I don't really want to do any collabs or like any major things to get any possible more streams besides just being myself and doing it on my own mm -hmm. until I get to a million monthly listeners. I mean, I hey, that's about to happen. That's dude. About, I mean, and especially since that's right around the corner, I know that it's like that's about to happen. insane to think about. But since the start, I've been like, it, now, now that I realize a million monthly listeners is totally possible. Totally. I totally. don't, I want that to just be me. You know, I, I got every single one of those million monthly listeners. It's not like a label getting connects, doing extra like marketing, getting on like promotions and stuff. Like this is all just me and my music making it out there. Cause you, you can't get like, you can't get to Drake level without like connections and stuff, but you can get True. a million monthly listeners being independent. And I want to be one of those guys who really just fucking they they had a dream and they pushed their art to the level and they got it yeah all on their own you know and now that that's right around the corner you know it's it's looking good no, but um that's no that's totally say. just one of my main you know ideas i'd really like it's still surreal to think that like that is gonna happen <laughs> mm -hmm. no no it like it is honestly it's just a matter of time um Super excited for you, dude. Uh, but yeah, no, thank you so much for sitting down with me over the internet, I guess, uh, and doing this interview. I've had such a great time, and I'm glad that, you know, people will be able to get a deeper insight into you, both as a person and as an artist. Um, but yeah, that's the very first official every sound at once interview um so thank you for being the first person uh of course and yeah no so excited for you and i just wish you the best and everything i know you're gonna do great thank you you too bro right, it's gonna, great talking i'm gonna end it how do i wait who Thank you all for watching. Um, check out Flying Fish's new EP in the description. Subscribe to me. Follow me on Instagram. But yeah, thank you all for making it through the video. If you got to this, hope you all have a good day.